Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a full face of Catrice makeup. I've collected a couple of things here and there over the past couple of years and I do have a full face. None of these things are new to me. I have tried them at least a couple of times uh, each and I'm very curious to see how a full face of Catrice looks. I do use Catrice a lot. Uh, I implement it in other looks, but I hardly ever do a full face of only drugstore anyway. So this is new for me and I hope the result ends up being good. So real quick before we get started, thank you so much for clicking on my video. My name is Cecile, I'm 29 years old, I live in the Netherlands and I upload a couple of videos a week with makeup related content. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok, this is my handle, it's also linked down below. So if you'd like to follow me over there then please do so. I do a lot of makeup and fashion, sometimes art and you know, a little bit of everything. <laughs> So now let's get right into the video. So I only have one eyeshadow palette by Catrice, at least at the moment. I feel like I did own one more, like in my teens, <laughs> but I'm sure that's a little bit old by now. <laughs> so I have the, the Lavender Breeze Pro palette. I think I used this for the first time on my channel about a year ago. And even though I didn't hate it, it ranked pretty low in my annual ranking video from my eyeshadow palettes. But I feel like it'll match my gray sweater, so it'll be okay. I don't have a Catrice eyeshadow primer. I'm not even sure if they make one, so I'm going to use my Essence. So I've heard that the uh, Catrice palettes are sort of hit or miss. I personally didn't love this one, but I didn't think it was bad. It was just okay. I think the color story is just a little bit boring, but also kind of pretty, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but I heard that their five in a box palettes are re really good. So just giving you some information, didn't try those myself, but just letting you know. But we're going to try this one today. I'll admit I haven't used it too much since I reviewed it about a year ago. I think I'm just going to start with the deepest shade and then it can only get better. So I'm going to go into the shade deep which is this eggplant shade. I'm taking this smaller pencil brush. I think I learned over the past year that not all eyeshadow formulas are easy to build up from light to dark. Sometimes it's better to start with the deepest shade and I think that's definitely the case here because I can get this pretty intense. Also a little bit right here I'm just going to do a sort of classic me look. I actually had no intentions of making it this dark and dramatic but there really isn't a, another deep shade in this palette. So it's kind of all or nothing. By the way, I did a, a review of Catrice's skin tint uh, about a month ago. And I did see that Essence has brought out a very similar product. Like suspiciously similar. <laughs> and I'm thinking about doing a side by side between those two. If that's something you're interested in, then please let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably just do it, but I won't rush it. And I think that Catrice and Essence are sister brands. So I wouldn't be that surprised, but... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you still have to make your own products, right? So I'm going into Lover, which is this pastel uh, lilac. And I'm going to use this to blend out the deeper shade. Yeah, so this is what I remember. This purple isn't very pigmented. I don't think this was the best idea to try and blend out that super deep shade, but I wanted to see if I could make the look a little bit more purple than brown. So there is a medium brown shade that would probably be a little bit more ideal. But it works. 
takes a little bit of time, but it does work. All right, so that's sort of a base down. I'm not completely in love with this blend, but I think this is the best I can do. Let me swatch a couple of these shimmers. So this is Dazzling. And this is Cotton. This is Lilac. This is Earth. I kind of like Earth, but it doesn't really match the other shades. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going into Lilac and then into uh, dazzling and then into cotton for my inner corner. Okay, I'm getting a lot of fallout, but I'm not usually bothered by that. What I am bothered by is that this shade is a little bit lackluster. It's pigmented enough, but it's just not very shiny. Or am I being too harsh? I just blend it over the matte shade and then I'm taking another finger and I'm going into Dazzling which is pretty but it's more of a topper shade so I am going to layer that all over the other shade but there's just not there's not a lot of shine here and they're not that opaque I can see the the bad blending underneath. Usually I don't really blend out the mattes on top of my lid because it's going to be covered anyway. But in this case I can definitely see through it. And then finally I'm taking a pencil brush and I'm going into cotton which was the white pearly shade. This one I actually find really pretty. Which is funny because these shades usually disappoint me the most. But this one is pretty pigmented. I'm also going to take that along the inside of the lower lash line. Yeah, I actually really like that white shade. I'm also going into Dazzling, which is that silvery pinky shade. And I'm putting that in the center of my lower lash line. I guess I don't hate it but I just don't really love the way the mattes are blended. I'm going to take this fluffy brush and I'm going back into Lover which was that lilac shade and I'm just going to go over everything with a slightly more fluffy brush this time. I think that'll make a difference. Yeah, that's a lot better. Now I don't have any eye pencils from Catrice and usually I would just pick something from a different brand but I don't feel like it's necessary. I'm just going to skip straight into mascara. And for mascara I have this uh, Lift Up Waterproof Mascara. I tried this about a year ago and I was really impressed. But since then I have tried a couple of mascaras that I like better but this one is still not bad. It gives pretty intense volume. And it does smudge a little bit, but not as much as the Lash Princess by Essence. Yeah, I mean, this still looks pretty nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm not mad about this mascara. Like I said, there is quite a bit of fallout. All right, now we can get into the face and I have a couple of options here. So I have two primer type products, but one I'm just not going to use in this video because I feel like it'll be a disaster. I have this one step skin perfector. And for those of you who may have seen my previous full face of Catrice video where I tried this for the first time, this was a true disaster. It wasn't a true primer. It wasn't a true skin tint either. It just made my skin look really dark. <laughs> Like it's it's supposed to be a one shade fits all but it's definitely the one shade is the light medium <laughs> and I'm not sure if it's going to work for anyone else. Definitely not for me but I do plan on trying this in a full face of second chances video or like a, a chopping block type of video. So I'm going to save it for that. I do have this dehydrator 
Plump and Fresh Primer. It looks beaten up, but just something spilled in my makeup bag. It's new. <laughs> Pretty new. Oh, this product is made in Italy. <laughs> so I like this product. I used it the other day and I thought it was quite similar to the NYX Plump Right Back Primer, which I really love. So this is the consistency. It's pretty thick, <laughs> but it does truly feel quite moisturizing and gripping. But not like the... I know I always compare the Guerlain uh, Lore Radiance Primer. This is definitely different. More thick, but less sticky. But still quite sticky. <laughs> yeah, it, it's also a little bit thicker than the NYX Primer, but I think the same amount of tech. So I think I like this. You just, you have to make sure that it's properly blended or else your foundation is going to peel on top. But I think we're good like this. So for foundation, I also have a couple of options. I have my new favorite skin tint, which is the uh, 24 hour hyper hydro skin tint, which I'm of course leaning towards. <laughs> but I also have two actual foundations that were released in previous years. This one was released last year. This is the True Skin Hydrating Foundation. I was not a great fan of this. And then there's the HD Liquid Coverage, which I'm also not a great fan of. So now I'm wondering, I do feel like this eye look deserves a little bit more coverage on the face. And I do probably plan on making a video with this one and the Essence. And I did use it in the other video. So we're going to use the True Skin because I think that's the better one of the two foundations that I have. I have it in the shade 004 Neutral Porcelain and I think it's a little bit deep for me. I'm just going to use a little bit less than I would usually use. Maybe that'll make a difference. And who knows, maybe this primer will be perfect with it. All right, so I have been using a lot of lighter coverage foundations and skin tints lately. And immediately this has a lot of coverage. <laughs> I just remember using this for the first time when I had a couple of lumps on my face, like a couple of huge zits. And it just looks so bad. That's what I remember. And it looking a little bit thick on my skin. I think that's the word that I used for it. But now I don't think it looks quite as bad as I remember. It's definitely very perfecting. Pretty high coverage. And I don't think it looks very natural, but I actually don't hate it nearly as much as I did the first time. And I tried it a couple of times. Like, I, I hated it all the time. Just taking a little bit more for my forehead. I think I just had a bad skin week or something because my skin is looking pretty good today. And like I said, I don't hate it nearly as much. And also I used this hydrating primer, which I don't think I did the last time I used it. Yeah, so I'll come a little bit closer. The finish looks a little bit shiny, but I'd say it's more natural. I do have an artificial light here. And I also think the, the hydrating primer really gives quite a bit of radiance. So what do we think? Yeah, like I said, I don't hate it at all. I don't love it either. It still looks a little bit heavy to me. And I don't like the way, like I have a couple of small lines on my forehead, really not a lot. And this does emphasize them a little bit. And I don't think it will look pretty on texture, but I'm having a pretty good skin day, like I said, and I think it looks okay. <laughs> All right, the concealer I'm going to use is this Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. I like this, but it's sort of similar to high coverage concealers from Essence and Wet n Wild. They look nice, but they're not high coverage. Um, they're sort of 
the same level of coverage as the new NYX concealer. But they do dry down a little bit more and I don't think this one creases a lot on me. But you can immediately see that this does not cover up really a lot. <laughs> Bad grammar, but you get it. So I'm just going to let that sit for a little bit. I don't have any Catrice eyebrow products, so I'm just going to use a little bit of my ABH Brow Freeze while I, while I let the concealer dry. I know that Catrice has a brow pen now, and I'm kind of interested in using that or trying that. Have you tried that? Because I find the NYX one is okay, but it it's a little bit red. I still find it a little bit red from time to time. It just sort of does that unexpectedly. And I don't like the fact that I can't trust that product completely. So I'm taking my foundation brush and I'm going to blend out the concealer. And I'm just tapping out the edges with my finger. I do like the fact that this is a really thin formula and I'll admit it is a little bit more coverage than I remember and it looks pretty. I just don't think it should be advertised as a high coverage camouflage concealer. That's just not what it is. But it's pretty, it might even be prettier than the NYX concealer, I had it right here, this one. It might. I do like it. I actually really like my complexion right now. Could it be the primer? I do really like that primer. I have used it with a lot of my foundations over the past week and it does look nice and glowy. For powder I have again two um, possibilities. One that I've been using a lot lately um, because it was in my standard makeup bag is this Poreless Perfection Powder. I do like this. It's not very brightening, but I can use it underneath my eyes. It, it's okay. But one that I would like to use, but that is definitely a little bit too deep for me, is this True Skin Powder. But I thought maybe we could start with this one and see if the other one is necessary. And the nice thing about this one is that it does have a mirror. And I do like, I do like this powder. It's just, it doesn't really do anything special. So it just sort of dries down or mattifies your concealer, but it doesn't really smooth out any lines or smooth out texture or look very pretty on the pores. It looks okay because mattifying will always make something look a little bit more smooth, but it's not the same as my Gucci powder, for instance, and I know that's a price jump, but I'm a firm believer that quality products should be or are at the drugstore as well. It's not all a matter of needing luxury products. See, this one works fine. It did deepen it up a little bit, but I think it looks okay. And I, I know it's a little bit of a, a tricky thing to do, or a dare, <laughs> a daring thing to do, but I want to use this powder. I just want to use it another time. So I'm going to use it lightly at the sides of my face and see if it works. It's supposed to be transparent and it's supposed to be mattifying. So I'm taking this bigger unicorn brush <laughs> and I'm taking a little bit of the product and let's see what happens. Okay, it's not as bad as I remember. I think it would definitely be a little bit too deep underneath my eyes, but I think on the rest of my face it looks okay. I do like the way a powdered face looks. It just looks a little bit smoother, especially after a couple of hours. When the oils start coming back a little bit, but I actually don't mind this. Yeah, it definitely deepened up my foundation a little bit. The powder itself is kind of nice. 
So the camera cut me off, but uh, I did my eyebrows. I used the NYX Lift and Snatch. I was saying about this powder that I actually kind of like the way it's looking. It did deepen up my foundation a little bit, but that foundation was a little bit too deep to begin with. So I think it looks all right. And I like the way how it sort of kept a natural sheen. I, on the other hand, think my under eyes look a little bit dry, but the concealer is a little bit drier as well. And the powder doesn't really, like the pressed powder doesn't really do you any favors. But I think the loose powder, the true skin powder is pretty good, especially if you're a little bit more deeper complected than I am. And I'm not sure there could even be a deeper shade of that one, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> I do know they have some, sometimes they do have deeper shades in things. All right, let's go into some face products. I have one Catrice bronzer. This is the, don't I have two? I'm pretty sure I have two, but I want to use this one. Uh, this is the Sun Lover bronzing powder. And I remember kind of liking this one. I'm not sure why I stopped using it. I was probably just overwhelmed with lots of new bronzers to try. But if I remember correctly, this one was, pretty subtle in a good way and since it's a baked formula there's a little bit of sheen in it yeah that looks pretty nice I'm actually a little bit more relieved than I was expecting to be of all things I like the eyeshadow palette the least I think But I am a little bit spoiled concerning eyeshadow palettes. This bronzer is pretty nice. It's a little bit orange. A little bit. Not, not too much, I don't think. It's definitely a bronzer and not a, a bronzer kind of product. And it's actually a little bit deeper than I thought. And the longer I look at my under eyes, the more I find that they look a little bit gray. And I think that's just because there is always a little bit of blueness underneath my eyes. Just a little bit. And I don't think the concealer covered it completely. And then the powder was a little bit dry. So I think that's all. But I kind of like this bronzer. I think it'll be a good one in the summer for me. I like my little bit more neutral, cool tone bronzers at the moment. Now, I was pretty sure I had more than one Catrice blush too, but I did find one, so that's good. This is the blush box, glowing and multicolor. It's this thing and it's called Dolce Vita. I don't think it's the best color with this eyeshadow, but we're just going to have to deal with it. I think this is a pretty nice blush. It's a little bit glowy. There's a little bit of a peachy reflect. I do know that the other one that I have from Catrice, although it looks very different in the pan, it sort of looks similar on the skin for some reason. It just doesn't have the gold reflect. But yeah, I can't confirm that <laughs> right now. So that's a little bit of blush. And now I'd almost say I don't need any highlighter because the blush was a little bit shimmery. But I have three Catrice highlighters, so I feel like I'm obligated to use at least one. So I have the, the OG, the, the famous More Than Glow highlighter. I saw Juicy Jazz use this in a video and I've seen uh, Teresa's dad talk about this about a year ago. I think this is a really pretty highlighter. It's pretty intense. But it's light enough for me and on me it doesn't look quite as intense. I think it's very similar in, in texture to Benefit Cookie. It's just a little bit more pink because I chose the shade Supreme Rose Beam. But there is a shade that's a little bit more golden as well. Then I have this uh, High Glow Mineral Highlighting Powder in the shade Light Infusion. Which is a lot more dry. <laughs> and a little bit more natural. But I really like the shade of this one. It has sort of a, a almost purpley reflex. And then there's the newest, newest one. This is the Glow Lover Oil, Oil Infused Highlighter. 
This I have in the shade Glowing Peony. And I think these shades are all very similar. I think this is the most natural of the three. And it may also be the deepest one. So I think I'm going to go for one of these because I did use this one recently. And I think I'm going to use this one. I think the purpley reflex would look really pretty with my eyeshadow, but I think this one would look a little bit prettier with my blush. So I'm just going to take a little bit. I'm trying not to make it too intense. This is one of those very blinding highlights. You can really build this up to be quite intense. I'm just going to refrain myself from using it all over my face and just keep it on my cheekbones and a little bit on my nose and a little bit on my lip. I'm not going to put it on my chin or forehead. Yeah, that looks nice. It's a little bit too metallic for me, a little bit, but I don't hate it. But I think from out of, th out of the three highlighters that I have, I like this one the most. I'm not sure if they still have it, but there you go. <laughs> All right, we've arrived at the final moment. I have two Catrice lip products here. I have this clear gloss that I tried in my other video and I have this ultimate lip tint. And I kind of want to refresh the way I feel about this one. So this is in the shade Stay On Over. So this is supposed to be a pretty sheer, non-transferable, non-transferring lipstick. I'm just not really impressed with this one. And I don't like the way it looks with my eyeshadow. So I'm going to take it off before it stains my lips. Which I think it did a little bit, but my lips are pretty red from themselves. So I'm just going to take the lip gloss. I thought I had something of a lipstick too, but I guess not. Oh, this lip gloss, by the way, is the Fake Lips Volume Lip Gloss in the shade... I don't think it has a shade. I can't find one. Anyway, it's the, the clear one with the shimmers. I like this gloss. I just wish I had something with a little bit more pigment to match the, the full face of makeup. But with that, we are done. And now the question is, does this look nice? Is a full face of Catrice makeup worth it? And I'd say it isn't. <laughs> I like a lot of these products, don't get me wrong. But I'm just always a little bit disappointed by the eyeshadows and then Maybe it's just my collection isn't good enough, but yeah, I never use one brand anyway. So it's really a hypothetical question, but I personally don't really love this makeup look. I like the, the complexion. I even like the lips, just not the combination, but this eyeshadow is really quite disappointing and I don't really love the concealer. It's a little bit gray. So it's not bad, but I don't get that same feeling as I have when I use a full face of Chanel, that's for sure. <laughs> but I hope you find this, found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.